The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Welcome to today's Gold Session with your host, Willie Miranda. Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you so much for being on today's call. I have a very special call with you today. Um, I call this the Live with the Blue segment. And the reason I call it that uh, is because, you know, we can always learn different things from different people. And it's always, you know, I remember this even from back in my old Prudential days. Uh, there used to be an actual uh, tape recording that used to come out every month called Live with the Leaders. And this is where I came up with this concept. And basically all it was, it just, it just interviewed every month. Uh, there was an interview uh, of someone that was doing something in the insurance business that was very successful in how they were growing their business. And I picked up so many great ideas uh, over the years by, by listening to those, those tapes. So as you know, you know, last, last month we had uh, George Lorimer on, and uh, this month I have a special guest that I'm going to introduce you to in a minute. So I like to do this moving forward and have uh, every month have a live, live with the leader call. So you don't have to hear everything that I'm doing in my agency. Let's talk to other people as to what they're doing in their business to grow, uh, grow their business. Um, so to start, I just wanted to kind of backtrack a little bit. One of the ways that we do it uh, in the correct practice system uh, is in, in our mastermind events, right? So we had a diamond mastermind event this past fall in New Orleans, and um, there was a gentleman there and uh, husband and wife, Mike and Cindy Birch, uh, that I was able to really meet and really find out a little bit more about their business. And had some great things to share, and I thought it would be beneficial for you guys to hear it today on today's call. Um, but during the mastermind session, what we do is you pretty much go around the room and, and talk about what's really working for us over the last six or 12 months in our business. And we're able to share different things that you just don't get in your own market. You know, think about, you know, I was at a, a women's council realtor uh, yesterday uh, in my hometown, and, you know, there's you're not going to get the same type of, uh, of, of information and people are not going to share with you what you're doing because obviously your competitors in your own market. Um, but here uh, it's open game. No one's a competitor. Everyone's trying to help each other and the mastermind setting is awesome. So um, when I went down last month to um, uh, in February, I told you that I went and spoke to at a couple different offices and I was invited into uh, Mike's, uh, mastermind group that he had with a few uh, real estate agents in the state of Florida. Uh, and it was a great time. We had a great event. There's a picture on the left uh, with Mike and Cindy there in the middle and a couple of the other agents down from Florida area. Uh, and then being able to do a little social activity and, and go golfing. Some of you know uh, Uncle Joey there, Joey Tremblay. Uh, but there's Mike and his wife, Cindy. And uh, I got to say, out of, out of the whole golf game was a great time being able to golf and being out there in a nice warm weather. Uh, and uh, Cindy kind of played like she wasn't that great of a golfer, and she beat all of us. So uh, very good uh, athlete, and uh, we had a great time. And uh, it was a great, great, you know, great to not only uh, have the, the freedom to, to go out there and, and do something that you love and, and do, but also to talk to real estate shop and, and what's working for us and what's not. So um, I want to go ahead and introduce our special guest. That's Mike Burge. And uh, Mike, you there? I am here. Well, Mike, I just, uh, from, from meeting you and, and talking with you, I've been very impressed and you've been able to share a lot of great things back and forth with each other. And you've uh, always been there to help my staff. And, you know, hopefully I was able to speak to your group and help your staff. And I think combined, uh, you know, we created that synergy together. And I, I really appreciate taking time out of your busy schedule uh, to be on today's call. But like I mentioned, you know, you, you live down in Naples, Florida, you broke your owner of Bridge Realty Group. Uh, married to Cindy Birch, uh, you have three beautiful daughters, and you currently are in the Craig Proctor Diamond and Platinum program. And uh, I guess I'd like to start off, Mike, by just asking a little bit of background. You know, I know you you had a different career before you got into real estate, and you've only been in the real estate business uh, for like a few years now, I think three or four years, and you've really done a great job. And I just wanted to maybe just give a little background as to, you know, where you were, why you got into real estate, and uh, share some of your successes up to this point. Sure. Well, um, I started in real estate about the beginning of 2012 and had no direction, really. Um, I stumbled upon a, a buyer and sold a house, closed my first home in November of 12. And um, before that, I was a tennis pro and I was a tennis pro for 20 years ahead of that. And uh, the one thing that I had learned from being a tennis pro was that um, I could always tell the people that had had lessons when they were younger and they came back to play. And I could always tell that they had had that training. So 
the first thing I wanted to do once I got my first commission check in November was to find someone to train me. And um, I looked around and, and found Craig and, and the program there. Um, immediately I, in that November, I flew out to Los Angeles to catch a super conference and, um, and basically started into the program right around January of uh, 2013. Um, 2013, I was by myself doing, um, doing the business and with no background or no clientele or anything, we, I did about uh, 4.9 million in sales, which was okay for your first year. And then, uh, then so it was 2013, then 2014, um, we just cleared 10 million in sales. Um, and then 2015, last year, we did 25.1 million in sales. And then this year, we've already knocked down um, 9 million in sales in the first quarter this year. So we're pushing awesome. to try to get to 50 million. So basically, you double, double, double three times in a row, which is awesome. And it looks like you're on pace to double it again uh, here in 2016. Yeah, we're hoping so. All right, well, awesome. Well, you got a great office, and I love the, the concept. I know you're in a little strip mall uh, area that you have right in Naples, Florida. So for anyone on the call that's looking uh, to send any referrals down in the Naples area, Mike's definitely the guy you're going to want to talk to. Uh, so I'm going to jump in. I know you wanted to share some different slides, and you sent me some great information to uh, share on today's call. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, bring that up and talk about, and I guess really the questions that I had for you before we came on to this call, Mike, was uh, to share some of the things. Like, how did you really get from, you know, why do, like you said, coaching is a big piece of it, right? But how do you go from doing $4 million and $9 million to $25 million to now you're on pace to double it again? Uh, there's got to be things that you're doing consistently on a consistent basis. Uh, I know the coaching is one of them, but if you ha and the question I had for you was, you know, give me four or five different things that you're doing uh, to, to take your business to the next level. And I think that's what you're going to share with, with some of us today is exactly what you're doing. So I know the first piece on here was time blocking. And, you know, I know we had talked about that in November about really setting up time. And, and uh, I think I even share with you a couple of resources with uh, Dan Kennedy's book, uh, the no BS time management. Um, but maybe you can just talk a little bit about the time blocking piece here and how it's been uh, instrumental in growing your business and being able to double the business like you have. Well, what it really has done for me is it's been able, I've been able to use my time more efficiently. Um, this is just my average week. It was last week. Um, and you can see that I really only normally work from Monday to Friday from nine until four thirty five ish and I'm done for the rest of the afternoon, um, the rest of the evening, and I don't normally work weekends, even though I did squeeze in a couple things there on Sunday. Um, but because of that blocking, I'm able to set aside certain times to get certain things done, and I know what's on my list to be done next. So like in the green boxes there, lead and client calls, I always set the, that time aside to make lead and client calls. It doesn't mean that I don't make it at other times, but those times are, are scheduled out for that. And then the orange time blocks, the strategic hours, are times that I spend on my business um, trying to, to develop different parts of my business. And that's one of the things that helps when you're trying to double your business is that you're constantly trying to implement other pieces of, um, of the system. You, you can't implement them all. You know, it's just too many things. Right. But for to keep trying to build and build and build, and once something's working well, I like to say you put a fence around it and you leave it alone and you, you add to it and you, you get something else. So I spend those strategic hours always trying to, to build the business and, and a lot of times I'll spend it out of the office. I'll spend it somewhere else. There's a library close or something like that just to get away and, and really work on, on the business. And then what else you have on here? You have, uh, so I know you're, you're also doing some uh, uh, coaching uh, for Craig, and you mm -hmm. have that blocked out that in there as well. And I know you have tennis that you still are very active with on Tuesdays and Thursday evening. You block that out for that. Um, yep. I think one of the biggest things that I see with agents that I hear from from time management standpoint is that they get very overwhelmed on emails and you know getting all these calls that are coming in. How do you handle that? Yeah, you can see in the pink there, I, I do an email and a voicemail. And I answer my emails and voicemails during those certain hours, and then I, I turn them off during during the rest of the time because 
you know, it, it, usually I hear it ding, I go over, I look at it. By the time I get back to what I was doing, I've lost track of where I am. And it's just a ton of wasted time. And most of the emails are just irrelevant. Um, I have an right. admin that she handles a lot of the most important emails go through to her. And she also has access to my email. So if something does important does come through, she'll tell me that something important came through and you need to handle this. But outside of that, I try not to deal with them as much as possible. It's just a time distraction for me. Um, and then all the dark blue things are just times that I get away. So, and then yellow is when I'm working with my outside sales agents um, and helping helping them with their business or help, and they're actually helping me with my business. Awesome, awesome. And I see here also that uh, on Fridays you're, is when you're actually putting time aside to work on your accounting side of it, right? Getting your administrative paperwork out of the way and, and what, 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 what does that look like? What is that, what are you doing on that, usually on that accounting time block? I absolutely hate accounting, but I do have to block it off or I just won't do it. Um, but <laughs> usually Fridays I do payroll and, um, you know, pay off, off just certain bills, but I don't do the pay the bill as they come in during the week. I wait, I hold everything and I do them on Fridays so that I'm right. only spending a certain amount of time on them and I'm not going from one thing to another. Um, if I did it when they came in every day, then I would be going, it would just add something else to my day when I could be more focused on things that are more important. Okay. So, you know, looking at this, you wear a lot of hats throughout the week, right? You're doing coaching, you're doing your accounting, uh, you're working on your business, not just in your business all the time. Uh, you're making lead generation calls. Uh, you're meeting with your staff. So, I mean, you got a lot of moving parts on here. And But what would you say, uh, and again, I know there's not one main thing, but I know that Cindy also helps and does a lot in the business as well and does more on sales. You know, Cindy is being Cindy Bird, your wife and owner. Um, but what would you say, you know, you focus you focus more on listings or does – any focus more on listing or, or vice versa? I do most of the listings. Um, like last week, you can see I had five different listing appointments um, and I took four of those listings. And um, the, the other one's listing with us in the next couple weeks. So we're I'm taking almost all of those. Cindy just likes to do buyers and she um, basically cherry picks the best buyers. So the buyers that are most likely to buy right now and probably the the higher price points, she handles those. Um, so that's her position. She really likes, she doesn't like to do a lot of the inner workings of the marketing. She likes just to handle buyers, so that's what she does. All right. How important would you say, on a scale of one to 10, 10 being the best, is time management and the success of your business? It's, I didn't realize how important it was until I started time blocking and just blocking out my times and. I, I didn't understand how important it was for me to get things done. Um, so once I started doing it, it, it just freed up my time tremendously, even though it's the same, you know, really the same things I'm doing. I'm just doing them in the right order, the right way. So um, it's really helped me a lot. It's been amazingly amazing update, upgrade to it. Okay. I know one of the quotes that I've always hung my hat on with uh, that I learned from Dan Kennedy is he said that time management is really the difference we, between unsuccessful people and successful people. And we all have the same number of hours during the day. Uh, we all, you know, you think about all the real estate agents that are out there, uh, the difference is what they do in that time. And this is a great example of a successful agent and how he pretty much puts this whole week together and you have to time block it. And I know when we're talking with you, as well, Mike, is that you treat those strategic hours, you protect that time, just like a listing appointment. Uh, and you wouldn't cancel a listing appointment, why would you cancel, you know, time to work on your business? And I know that's how you've treated that moving forward, and that's made a big difference for you. It has. And, you know, there there are times when, say, on a Friday at 1 o'clock, a listing appointment comes up and they we have to be on Friday at one o'clock in the middle of my strategic hours. I just take my strategic hours and I slide them to another time that's open, yep. but I never delete them. I only, I just move them to another time. So I'm not putting them off or putting them away anywhere. I'm just, just transferring my time around. Awesome. Okay, great. All right, well, let's talk about this next piece here. I know uh, one of the tools that you use and I know we picked it up from the last mastermind because we were doing a lot of stuff with bull leads and 
some other um, uh, software programs that were out there, uh, was using Cloud CMA. And I know that white blank piece here for some reason is not coming through, but I'll see what I can do in a second to bring it up there. But maybe you could talk a little bit about Cloud CMA and how you use it in your business and why it's been sure. so effective. Sure. And I think if you click on that, it'll actually bring it up. If it, nope, that's the next page, so maybe not. Okay. But um, what we're doing with Cloud CMA is we have um, we build it out so that it has the marketing. Oh, there's the Cloud CMA. So yep. all the marketing is included in in it. So as you flick through the pages, um, we've we've added different custom pages to it so that um, so that they're getting all the marketing once it's sent to them. So everything from our satisfaction guarantees to our different marketing strategies are all in there. And we put about a, a few pages first before we give them what they've actually asked for, which is the properties that have recently sold and the ones on the market that you're seeing coming through now. Um, and then after that, we go back to our marketing again. So we're not wasting this mailing in any way. We're not just sending them the lists of homes that have sold in their area. We're also marketing to us of why they should choose us and, and what we can do compared to other agents in the area. What we've done is once we got this all set up, then we automatically, um, like if you're using a bold leads program or something like that, it automatically sends it out to them. So it only takes us about 30 to 45 seconds to put together one of these for somebody. Um, and we can email it directly out to them. And then all the, all the marketing materials are all included within it. And it looks great. It comes across as, um, as a whole, whole piece and it's very professional. And you, and you go through, and it's almost like a mini listing presentation that you're actually giving them. So you're getting information that they requested, and you're getting all your different strategies and different things that you do without having to give them everything that you do. Meaning, you know, like on this page here, let's get started, and it actually walks them through all the different things that you're going to do for them, but you're not actually giving away in case it gets into the wrong hands, your competitors, or whatever. You're not giving them everything you would say in your listing presentation, but enough stuff that it should – at least get them to the point where they feel like, wow, you know, these, this is exactly what I think I need to get my home sold and look at all these different things. And it gives them a huge wow factor looking at all this stuff as to what you're going to do to market their property. There's a picture in front of your office there. Mm -hmm. um, but no, it's great. We, we implemented this. And uh, so far uh, with bowl leads, it's great because now we can just, you know, send them all this stuff and we're getting a lot of responses back just in the last three or four weeks that we've been using it of interacting with the client because like you said, you know, after four thirty, five o'clock in your case, uh, there's not a lot of people able to answer those right away. And this is done automatically and it's giving them really good information and you're educating that seller uh, as to what they need to know. And here's a big piece too, uh, the client and getting these testimonials in there. Um, anything you want to add about the testimonials and how that's been working for you? Well, that's always one of the pieces that other people say that we're good you know, not just us. So that's always one of our largest pieces of our marketing program and um, is using our testimonials and leveraging them to, to bring more listings and more sales. Um, so we tried with these, we tried to use them, use different people. So we had people that are relocating, people that um, just different styles of people. The, um, the one in the middle is they, their father, mother, father passed away and they had to sell it from a distance and um, another one was a high end where he was a, a, an executive and we're trying to relate to a wide range of people so we're using certain people specifically um, and then the w one where it says about Windermere we sold that home in 24 hours um, where those homes were sitting on the market for six to eight months normally so you know, it, just trying to touch everybody that it might relate to. Okay. All right, great. Well, thank you very much for sharing that. And we'll go into our next uh, piece here. Um, so that was a cloud CMA. Um, DNC compliant listing. Uh, at first, I thought this was like a compliance or I didn't know what it really meant the first time I saw this. But then when you explained it, I thought it was awesome because um, I, I find myself getting caught up sometimes working with different types of people that are out there 
where it can really make or break whether you get the listing or not. And uh, without stealing any more from that, why don't you go ahead and explain what you came up with? Well, what we did with our listing presentation is we found that the listing presentations like that Craig provided and uh, um, tended to be lengthy. And me being a deep personality, I'm, I'd get halfway through it and I'd be bored. So um, I just, we wanted to have it to be brief and simple for D personalities, but we wanted to have all the information for C personalities. So what we did was when we built out our, our, our seller benefits presentation, we put in hyperlinks in our PowerPoint presentation. So I could actually skip through certain things and, um, and not skip through it if I didn't want to. So the first couple of slides are, are just our normal presentations. Um, this goes to everybody they see uh, unique team positions, all that. It tells a little bit about Cindy and I. Um, the ABCs, which everybody's probably seen on their listing presentations. And then explaining a bit about the teams. And then as we get a little further, so here we've got the five biggest reasons to use us. And we're starting to get to the point where you may may start to be losing them. So um, if you slide over number one, and the the mouse will turn to a, a pointer, it'll turn to a finger. You have to kind of wiggle it around there and find it so it turns to a finger, and you can click on it, and then it tells them that how many homes we sell. And then if you click the bottom um, square in the corner, that will take you back to that screen that we were just at. Okay, so and I can. I can pick out any one of those. Okay. Like, so basically what you're doing is if you could just go through these five real quick. Uh, if they're deep personality, like you said, like you, like you're right. You just say, Hey, these are the five biggest reasons why did you do business with us? And you could just hit those hot buttons. We sell more houses. We sell for top dollar faster, our record. Right. And then you go, right. We have the buyers and here's the next slide. Or if you have more of a, like you just said, a C personality type that wants to know the, you know, the data behind it, you can right. actually click. So if I just click on this, uh, we sell more homes, let's see what that says. So explain that slide there. So you could say you sell more homes or you can actually prove it, right? Yeah, this was the days on market, the number three uh, that we sell them fast. So we took to sell it for 28 days, the average agent's 30 or 90, 31% faster. And then by clicking the black button at the bottom right corner, I go right back to that original thing again. And some people want all the information and some people don't, you know, and if they don't want all that information, I can go through it really fast and then, um, and then click. So, yep. And you're going through all of them here. And then if you click the button at the bottom, it'll take you back to where we were. Right. So I just, you know, I just, I got out of the presentation there, uh, but okay. I'll go right back to it here. So basically, what, what, what's this slide for? How many slides for a D personality type, and how about, many you, can you do for a C? About ten for a D, and then I can get it out to about thirty for, for a C. Wow. So, okay. So you can cut it right down. So this is a slide that uh, I picked up, and uh, I think I had picked up from uh, being in a Diamond Mastermind as well. That. And Craig has talked about this for years that we should. The reason why sellers hire us is because they want to know we have the buyers, right? That's why they're they're hiring us, and that we're going to be able to market their home, to create the most demand, to get the most amount of money for their house. So how are you going to do that, and how are you different from other people? And I haven't seen anyone actually sit there and actually come with a list. I mean, there's a couple agents that I talked to say that they print out their whole buyer list and they have that thumb factor where they can just walk in and they can show it. And Mike, I might have heard that from you, but yeah, we do that. I'm showing the screen, right? You do that. So maybe you can explain the screen as to the power of this, because I think this slide right here is very powerful. And I've seen a lot of sellers when you get to this point, they start, you know, drooling a little bit because they want to market this home. How do you sell this page? Um, well, I've got it written right here on my big whiteboard in my office. You know, buyers want houses and sellers want buyers. So it's just the most important piece to sellers is to show that we have buyers. And when I go to a buyer 
or a seller that's interviewed other agents, I said, well, did any of the other agents show you their list of buyers? And more than likely, the answer is going to be no. You know, right. why they don't, everybody can market. You know, everybody can do a lot of the marketing, but not everybody has buyers. Yeah, and that's so true. I mean, in the, in the, in the times that I've been using this, um, the answer has always been no. Agents are just showing them what they're going to do to market their property, but they're not telling them that they have the buyers. And the other thing that we do on there is we show them another screen that we have that actually shows that, you know, like in your, we have 25, Mike, we have 25,700, uh, you know, buyers in our system, in our commissioning system. And um, I'm sorry, it, it, I have market leader and commissioning. So the, the combination of the two is like 25,000. And um, we just tell them when we list a property, we have a matching tool that we do and we go into it and, you know, we match up your, your buyers to your home. And sometimes we could pull out, you know, 15, sometimes we could pull out 50 of them. And then we want to send the, the listing as soon as it hits the market out to all those different buyers that are looking for your home and, and people love it. And, uh, and I know it's something that you use and it's been working for you uh, just as well. Yeah. When we get to the slide, that's when we pull that buyer list out of our, out of our bag. So this is the next thing, the uh, 72 hours within signing. Um, this is our marketing things. And if you click on any one of those boxes, they take you to uh, more information about that certain thing. So if we talk about the 78 syndicated sites, it tells you about all the different websites that we put them on. If, it, if you do Zillow, it talks about um, us being a Zillow agent. And then the bottom buttons always take you back. So whatever piece that we think that they may want to see, um, 155 step action plan, that's our, our action plan that we do. So it, it, we can further explain any of that or I can just fly through it if I have to. If I see their eyes glazing over and they're done, then I can just kind of read through this. Here's a bunch of things that we do. And uh, otherwise I can click on it and give them all the information if I'm uh, if, if I have a C personality. And then once I'm done with that, I just click that bottom one. It goes right to the last slide. And it, this is the recap and we're looking forward to selling your home fast. Awesome, okay. okay. Great stuff and I love the, uh, the graphics on it and everything that you did on that, just showing the guarantee. And, uh, it just looks very professional and um, uh, did a great job with that, Mike. So great job. Thanks. Okay. The next one, actually, uh, I'm excited to say that I just did my first one today, and it just launched, and uh, we're getting a lot of oohs and ahs already, Mike, so thank you very much for uh, pointing me in this direction, and um, maybe you could talk a little about this and costs and some different options. I didn't go with the option you did. Uh, someone locally already had it, so maybe we could talk about that, and we can help anyone on the call um, know what we're talking about here to get this type of uh, technology in place. Well, uh, Matterport is a company that has just released um, a special camera. And the camera basically sits in the room and takes a 360 degree picture. And then it runs through an iPad and it t tells me where to move it to next. And then I can move throughout the house and then I can create these virtual walkthroughs. And for us, it's important in our area um, because we a lot of our buyers are from um, up north and it may not be in town. So th for us to be able to send a walkthrough up to them it, up north, it, it helps. We can get offers without them actually having to be here to walk through the house because this does such a good job of it. Yeah, and I would think um, down in your neck of the woods that uh, you get a lot of out-of-town buyers and, and, and this is, I mean, I can't believe the quality uh, and how great this is. Uh, and I can imagine an out-of-town buyer would just buy over the phone. I mean, have you had that actually happen? Um, not yet. We've only been using it a short period of time, but we did just pull a good size listing because of it. Um, when we pulled it in um, and showed them about it, uh, we just listed a $1.6 million condo on the beach because of it. So um, it ha has already started to pay off. Awesome. Well, anyway, I know it does a first floor plan and then it does a second floor plan as well. It'll go upstairs, downstairs, as you can see here, by just mm -hmm. clicking on the mic. Um, and over here on the, on the bottom left, you can actually do a dollhouse version as well. So you can actually show the floor plan 
where you can have both floors on there, or you could just do a, a first floor, second floor. Yeah. Um, I don't know if you can really see that too much on here, but um, I don't know. I'm just looking at this. So just, I'm going to go ahead. And basically what happens is once you're in, oh, there's your floor plan. Um, once you're sitting in one of the rooms, you can use your mouse to drag side to side, look side to side and look up and down and, um, and be able to click. And when you click once time, it walks you forward and you can walk around the house and look up. You can see the details in the ceiling. You can look down, see what kind of the floors are there. And, uh, and you can basically walk through the home. Um, it doesn't work real well outside. We've we've got it to shoot out a little bit, but you can stand at the window and look out the window like you would normally do if you were in the house. Um, there you uh, go. So right here, like if you wanted to go to the window, you can actually see what type of view you're looking at by just clicking. I'm going a little quick here, so I'm not used to the controls on here, but that's beautiful. I mean. <laughs> Uh, so you can get the whole inside of the house is what you're saying. And then obviously you see the views from the windows there. Yeah. And, you know, if, if anyone wants to see what it really looks like on full speed on their computer, if you go to bergerealtygroup.com, um, we have some, a bunch of our Matterport videos there. So you can kind of walk through right. it all. So I know that the technology obviously just came out. So it's, um, you, know, you have to pay for the camera or you can get a local photographer that may already provide it. Like in my case, I have a local, um, let me get out of this cause I can play with this all day long. It's really good stuff yeah. and, uh, great to, uh, I love seeing them I mean, the technology is great on this, but it's I have addicting. a local, um, yeah, it is. Um, so I have a local camera guy that, uh, or photographer that does all of my still photos and he does a really good job. He's been doing it for a few years. And, um, he looked into it as well. And then we got talking and I, geez, I just saw, you know, uh, a couple advertisements for it. And then I saw it in your office, Mike. And I said, is it something that, um, you know, you're going to get? And he says, yeah, I'm actually going to buy the camera. So I just say, no, it's just easier to have him do it. And I think he charges us like four or $500 for a 3000 square foot home, but it takes time, right? It takes a couple hours to shoot it and do it right. Um, and why don't you go over maybe some of the costs if, if, you know, or the two options, right? You can, either have someone do it or, or buy the camera and do it yourself. Maybe you can go right. over those options with us. And what we decided to do was um, we decided to buy the camera. And um, with the camera, you have to buy the camera, the tripod, and you need an iPad um, to run it. So um, since we're um, more PC type of people, we didn't have an iPad, so we bought an iPad to go with it. Um, but we, the camera cost, we, we – paid 4,000 for the camera and then um, the other little things on top of it, the tripod and everything. But what we found was we shot three Matterports yesterday. So, you know, we figured that the return on it would be great. And the other thing that we haven't talked about with the Matterport is that I can walk around in the house, I can line it up and then I can shoot a still shot out of it and I can take those still shots and put them on my MLS. So I don't really need still pictures either because I can use the Matterport ones, which are bright and they're a little fisheye and they make everything look big. So it's just another way of shooting, you know, pictures and being able to see it at the, in the, uh, in the little producer part of it. How, um, how has it been sitting in front of the seller now by being able to show them this is a tool to get your home sold? I mean, is it a wow factor for you or is it, you know, something the, that uh, plays a big part or not a big part. Oh, it, it definitely plays a big part. And, you know, we are talking about the iPad thing. So now I just bring up one of ours on the iPad and I hand it to them and they start playing with it. And like you found, it's really addictive to start playing with it and sliding it and, and walking through it. So a lot of times they don't hear the rest of my presentation. They're playing with the iPad. <laughs> but it, it's been a major, major piece, you know, that they – can't believe that the technology a lot of people didn't understand how far the technology has come in this and like I said it's big for us in Florida because I've got in, I can send it to international buyers I can send it to people who are up north maybe in snowy New York up there that maybe want to walk through a house and see some palm trees out the window all right awesome well, let's go to the next piece here so we don't run out of time I know you had a a big piece of this uh, and your success has been 
leveraging yourself with people, right? We can uh, market ourselves with technology, uh, marketing, and people uh, is, all, is the third wheel here. They're probably the one of the most important. So maybe you could talk a little bit about uh, how the admin support has helped you. Yeah, um, the first person I hired was my was my admin assistant Husta, and she actually started with me before my wife did, and um, she's she has a, a high C and S personality, so she likes the details and the checklists, which is great for me because then I know that my contracts and my um, addendums and amendments are all perfect because she's got them all down. All I have to do is just basically get the contract signed, and then she's ready to to take over and finish it up for me. So that was big. But then once we started getting more and more listings, then we needed to add a listing coordinator. And we decided to go the virtual assistant route. So our virtual assistant in the Philippines handles a lot of our listing coordination. So she makes sure that the, the MLSs are on and um, we've launched our Facebook marketing campaigns and um, we have an exact checklist that she goes through. And she's very strict on the checklist. She she makes sure that everything is done and and uh, and running. And you know, as you know, there's a lot of pieces when you list the house to make sure that all the marketing is launched. You saw earlier our 155 steps that we go through when we we when we um, list a home. So you know, we make sure that everything is covered and ready to go. And she's a big part of that now. So while she's doing all the paperwork and all the the marketing, I can be out listing another house. What advice would you give to uh, people on the call today if they were looking to get an assistant? Because I hear that more and more often where people say, you know, I got to get someone. I just yesterday I was sitting down with one of our agents at the uh, awards meeting and, and she said, you know, I got a great year, two years in a row, and I know for me to go to the next level, I'm going to need to get some help. Um, what advice would you say about using someone, say, locally uh, or going with a VA? What would be the difference between the two that you feel that you, they should know about? Um. The locally is always the best the best answer. Um, the VAs are, are sometimes they can be more difficult to communicate with just because of time differences and all of that. But if you can go local, I would. It's just it tends to be more expensive that way. And we try out new things using the VA and then we bring it in locally um, if we have to. But when I went through the hiring process originally. Um, I knew that I needed a detail-oriented person, so I set up a Gmail account, which was, you know, some type of job Gmail account, and I put in the ads, put admin assistant, real estate admin assistant in the in the subject line, and I had a I set up a filter so anybody that sent me an email that had real estate admin assistant in the subject line, it got forwarded to my email. Everything else went straight to trash, so. If they couldn't at least follow those steps, then they weren't going to be perfect for me anyway. So I, it, I took all those applications and I funneled them down to just a few people that I wanted to meet with. Okay, awesome. Well, it's working for you, and I'm sure that uh, you know. I know we had talked about the when I was down there that you're looking to expand, and you probably will expand in both directions, both local and with a you know additional VAs. Yeah, probably. Okay, seller tele, uh, targeted Facebook ads. Um, we did the same recently, and I've, um, we don't do them as consistent as we should, and that's one of the things that we were talking about, doing more marketing to drive more people through, because you know, we try all different things, and uh, Google, you know, pay-per-click, and then through Commissions Inc., and Market Leader, and all these different things, but the seller targeted Facebook ads, seems like you've really done a great job with that. Uh, maybe you can explain what you guys do differently than, than most and how it's been effective for you. The one thing that we had learned through Mastermind and all that was that when you run your ads on Facebook, you can run them to geographic areas like everybody normally does. But there's another piece where I can put in the email addresses or the phone numbers of people that I wanted to target, and it'll only send my ads to those individual people which we thought, oh, that's, that's a good idea. So now we've taken it and we've, we've made two different ads for every time we list a house. Um, the first one is we set up an ad for the seller of the home. So they're the only ones getting our ad that's about their own home. 
So every time they log into Facebook, they see us advertising their home. And it's just a kind of a constant reminder to them that we're advertising for them. So it's always in front of them. They never click on it. So we never end up paying any money for it because they know what their house looks like. Maybe they'll click one time, but that 50 cents is so worth it to me to have it be an impression on their, their timeline every single time. And then also the second set is all of our seller leads. Um, we, we use their email and phone number to target them every time we list and sell a home so that they, they're our hottest people. So those are the people that we want to continue to be in front of saying, oh, we just listed another one or oh, we just sold another one. So they're constantly seeing our name coming across. And for three days after we sell or list, we, we target all our seller leads with Facebook ads and it's targeted directly to them through their email address or phone number. Oh, so that really keeps your costs down then by doing it that way. And so you're taking all the bull leads that you have or all the seller leads that you get from all different sources, you're tagging them and upload them into Facebook and just going after those as a targeted seller lead with the just listed, just sold. What are you spending on that? Well, I mean, what would that, you know, campaign look like as far as, Oh, costs? we're spending next to nothing on it. We, we usually run it for three days and we'll put $10 a day on it, but we never get to that. It's usually a buck or two. The whole idea is to get the impression to get our our face in front of them. We don't really need the click through because they're already a lead. We already have all their information. So we just want to stay in front of them so all they do is see us. So, the right. cost so they're going to see much. this and be like, wow, this guy, uh, Mike Burge here, he's, he's advertising left and right and you just keep popping up uh, on their screen over and over again. And from result, and then they obviously click on some of those leads and it's going to drive them to a call to action find out what their home value is or whatever the situation may be. And that's how you're getting the lead to come back to you. And then you have your inside salesperson that you have in house too. That's following up on those leads. Yep. And he's, yeah, he's making phone calls eight hours a day, five days a week uh, to all those people. Yeah, awesome. All right, good. That's great stuff. Okay. Pictures in your conference room. This was something we picked up from a mastermind as well. Um, what we did was we had a bunch of cool pictures in our conference room and we took them all down and we put up pictures that look like this, which are our USP with testimonials. It, so when buyers show up at our office and they're waiting in our conference room, whether they're, you know, we're going to print something off or they're just waiting for the agent to, to come in, they're all standing around reading our testimonials. And it just was a, made a lot more sense to me than just putting up silly pictures of the area or whatever. This is just remarketing to people that we already have. All right, awesome. Well, third party testimonials are huge and having the picture, I feel um, even just brings it to the next level. I know a lot of agents uh, have just taken, you know, um, testimonials that they've gotten through a letter or, you know, through a Zillow or something like that and use that. But if you can get a picture and it doesn't have to be a picture like, I like the fact that, you know, like a lot of the pictures that we have, Mike, for testimonials, you know, we only take them because we can get them in front of their house with a soul sign or, you know, we give them a soul sign at a closing and they take the picture with the soul sign. But I noticed here you have them like, uh, you know, here, you know, in front of the, uh, the lake here. You have them here, you know, and probably at a pool having lunch or something. I mean, these are great shots. And um, is there a reason why you do it that way versus the sign or is just the way you've, you've done them? It's just the way we've done them. The one on the left in front of the lake is actually right at their new house. Um, it just happens to be right on a lake. So um, it's just where we had shot it. We sometimes take a sold sign and put it, kind of put a sold across it, but um, we wanted to keep them clean for these. But yeah, that's normally what we do. And the one on the left was actually taken out of a video testimonial that they did for us, and we just captured one of the, the screens out of it while they were talking. Um, we oh, okay. stole, kind of stole that idea from you. We are having a customer appreciation party coming up and we'll have a videographer shooting testimonials of all the customers that we haven't gotten testimonials from. He's gonna be there shooting video testimonials and we can write it down and use pictures out of it. So that should work well as well. Yeah, that's great. Use it in all your marketing. We actually have a TV show that runs every day for a half hour. And uh, we ran that for years, um, same same testimonials. And what, what you did basically, what you just said, we had a client event and at the client event, we hired a video guy to come in 
actually he's shy, so it's actually Craig Proctor's uh, video guy who flew in for three days. And we did some other some other marketing and some other uh, videos that we shot here. But I had him. We had a, a client event, and I actually had the the owner of the the establishment, the high end steak place, actually pay for the event. It was probably it would have cost me about three thousand dollars for appetizers and you know cheese crackers, all kinds of different appetizers and beverages. And uh, he paid for it, and I put him in the actual show uh, for a couple of minutes, interviewing his chef and his business. But the point being is that if you can, uh, you don't have to be that elaborate. You could just have a small little gathering and just get people to say, you know, why they love working with, you know, Mike Burge and Burge Realty, and just, you know, ask them, and they'll 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 give you great feedback and and great testimonials. And people I've had over and over again said. You know, they really enjoyed watching those, or that was one of the reasons, because they were able to, like you said before, relate to that person. And I've had people say, geez, I went for sale by owner. We gave them a try. They came in, and they sold their house quickly, and they handled everything for us. Or, you know, they had an estate situation, or they had a divorce situation. And um, it really touches different people, because let's face it, we're in a people business, so uh, we need to know what their hot buttons are. And uh, the more you can mix this up, the better, and you've done a great job with that. So... Well, Mike, thank you very much for uh, taking the time. And um, I don't think I have any questions, but if anyone's on the call right now, uh, it's a great time to ask questions. You could just type it in the question box. I know that um, uh, Pedro Romero, thank you very much. He made a comment on here. Um, basically, he said that uh, house, houselens.com, so that's H-O-S-E-L-E-N-S.com, does photos, walkthrough videos, and 3D Matterport. Uh, at decent prices, well worth it. So uh, thank you for that, uh, Pedro. Appreciate it. Um, and I know that, um, you know, we're going to use our local guy for now and see how things go with that. Uh, but I, I could see us doing more and more of these. Is there a certain, here's a good question for you I'd like to, uh, to know, Mike, is that are there certain houses that you won't do these on? Like I know my guy was saying, oh, I could do them on a 1,500 square foot house or I could do them on a 6,000, you know, the sky's the limit. But is there a certain criteria that you uh, would do that and, and or not do it? Um, we pretty much do it on most all of them. There are some some homes that just don't show up well on it just because they're a little overly cluttered or whatever. Um, a lot of furniture. Sometimes, you know, we won't do those. But um, most of the time we do it on, because we own the camera and it doesn't cost us anything more to do it, we do it on everybody so that we can you know, do the full job for everybody. All right, awesome. All right, well, listen, we got a couple more comments here, and then we will uh, log off. But uh, Sam had a question there. He wanted to know uh, how much do you pay your VA? Our VA, we hired through onlinejobs.ph. Um, it's a little tougher. You got to really sort through them a little more than you would like uh, my out desk. They kind of sort through them for you. But um, ours, we... We pay um, $120 uh, um, per per week, so we pay her $240 per pay period, and she works a 40-hour week, and she works in our time frame, so between nine and five, Monday through Friday. Okay, awesome. And so I know there's another an resource, uh, ten bucks an hour, yeah. And there's Free. another great resource that I've used in the past, which is uh, myoutdesk.com. Uh, you can go to myoutdesk.com and. They have a pretty good program there as well, and uh, really focus on and target on real estate agents uh, for the most part, and uh, they do a great job. All right, any closing comments, Mike? That's it. Thank you for having me. I appreciate it. And... I appreciate it. And you have a comment here from uh, Ed Alvarez. Mike's a great broker, so I guess you, you, you probably know Ed personally, huh? Yeah, Ed is one of my OSA guys, so... No, I know. I met, I met Ed. I was just joking. Ed's a great guy. And, uh, good, good student. And I know that uh, he read my book, too, and gave me some great comments on it. But uh, I know, uh, you know, I think he's he came up from uh, New York State in that area and moved down to you and, and doing well down there. So I know yeah. he enjoys working there and had some good comments with him. And you got a great shop down there, Mike. Proud of you. Keep up the good work. And uh, I'll see you in a couple weeks in Anaheim. Looking forward to it. All right. Take care, pal. We'll talk to you soon. And thank you very much. And that concludes our call for today. Thank you very much. Bye-bye now.